Hey YouTube, on Thursday, I used a very meta team with Spark Lantern. And in this video, I'm using a very meta team with Water Gun Lantern. And I'm basically going to go over why you would use Spark over Water Gun. So Spark got a nerf, but actually got a buff, uh, for those of you who don't know. What happened is Spark's damage increase, uh, but its energy generation decreased. Uh, overall so it hits harder but it takes longer now with spark to get to surf and thunderbolt than it used to however as you can see in the damage uh, and energy here despite doing the same damage as water gun it actually still charges faster than water gun right so why would you so is spark an upgrade in 95 percent of the cases yes it's an upgrade because it still hits way harder and still charges very very quickly seven energy per second is very strong energy generation so why would you ever use water gun which i used here personally i found i found that extra second of energy i mean sort of that extra one energy less per second i felt that getting to some of these i did not like using water gun at all and i actually struggled a bit with it is there some strengths to it yes and it comes down to team building what you want to cover for so like I said, 95% of the time, you probably should use Spark. When are you not going to use Spark? The only reason you would want to use Water Gun is if you are trying to trap something, like a Lantern, not Jesus, like a Swampert, where you like safe swap this and Swamper comes out with trying to Earthquake you, but you have Water Gun. That actually makes that matchup neutral as opposed to Sparks, which are resisted. So that, from that perspective, water gun and surf combo is better than a spark surf. So anything that's ground uh, that resists electric, that's when you'd want to use it. Uh, or, sorry, ground water that it would be neutral, because other one where it hits super effective is against uh, Gligar. So Gligar is a flying ground. So ground double resists electric. So if you do sparks to Gligar, you're doing single resisted. And then getting to the surf but if you use water gun you're doing super effective against gligar so really it's if you're using water gun lantern you're in my opinion against the main meta you're really only using it to look at swampert basically anything with ground you're 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 attacking ground that would otherwise resist the electric you're now you're now punishing them or at least doing neutral on swampert but super effective on other ground type pokemon like a digger's beast stuff like that you would now be doing super effective with water gun that you'd otherwise resist um from that again from that perspective it's better having used it in action again you feel in all these neutral matchups you feel that extra second uh behind here and this is one example right water guns doing the same damage here as it normally would to a a sand slash Sparks would do the same amount of damage. They have the same damage per energy, but you're now getting to that surf a second slower. And again, you, I'm now, while they got to the draw run, I'm still like short. Like, and, and this is why I just kind of, I did not like it. So I'm sure there, I don't, I actually, I don't even know what the, I forget all the matchups here because I have so many teams and so many battles. Uh, but I'm sure there are some matchups where it is better. Like I get a Gligar or I get a Swampert. Uh, but for the most part, it just it's just worse, <laughs> quite honestly. Um, so I do grab, I do take it out. Again, you don't need to worry about the damage per energy because the damage per energy is the same as Spark, right? We just went over that. Um, but maybe I could have done a little more damage on the Ninetales. Now, it doesn't matter. I have a super bulky Pokemon that can just absorb all this damage. Uh, again, very meta team. Not much to think about here as to why it works because it's just truly super dominant pokemon uh frostlass is tricky in the back here i may am i gonna try and catch or just gonna yeah force them to throw multiple shadow balls here because one won't take out they'll have to throw two if they throw two maybe i can lick and oh they're gonna try and farm and get caught and yeah I, you, can, you can see that coming from a mile away because if they threw I would maybe get to lick and, and power up and take it out before they took me out. Which is why they tried to commit. Shadow Vic, again, terrible lead. Got to get out of here immediately. Look, tongue is your safe swap. 
Steven doesn't have a real answer to a pure grass like this, but Lickitung is just so tanky that you just kind of do fine in this matchup. Um, like, I'll get to another body sim unless they acid spray me. I mean, at this point, you kind of have to commit the shield. And it's a leaf tornado, so my tag harshly fell. So that's kind of annoying. But this will still chip, obviously not as much, and they can just commit to the full farm down and come out with a Psychic or Dynamic Punch. Just as I got to the body slam, they hit me. So again, normal, neutral matchup, any neutral matchup, Water Gun is worse. Some may argue, as a one-turn fast move, uh, it's better because you're much better able to catch and maneuver in a one-turn than you are in a two-turn. Sure, but it's not like we're talking about like a one turn fast move versus a like a five turn fast move or something, right? It's a one versus two. So there's a little difference, but is there is there enough of a difference to matter overall? I don't think so. I would rather just take that spark damage. So my tech harshly falls. I do have two moves. Um I, I don't know why I thought I was already down to their final two Pokemon. This game is super over. <laughs> And uh, yeah, that's actually a very common lineup, just different order. The Bastion is usually Bastion lead, Metagem, uh, Shadow Vic in the back, but I guess they just uh, changed that order up a little bit. I shield up a Scald because I feel like that would hurt. And if they hit that Scald, I feel like then I'm more in like a bait ice punch range. So I'd rather just shield up the harder hitting move. Yes, they took a shield from me, but Medi still has a ton of health here. Um, and I'll get to a Psychic. This will put it super low. Um, and they are shielding, which is interesting because I... I'm surprised I'm throwing here because I probably... I could have got to... I could have got to a Psychic, but maybe I'm thinking that I'm going to be low there that they will be low enough they can just counter down. Uh, now, a bulky versus bulky Pokemon, but my bulky Pokemon is very spammy, and theirs uh, got nerfed. So the Sky Attacks are much slower to get to. Not much slower, but a little slower to get to. Going straight Moonblast, that's an option too. Um, this Body Slam probably will not take out. And they're probably going to commit to the farm down, but again, not going to do it. You can't. So this is something someone put in the comments. Um, what do you do in these situations where you cannot count the one turn fast moves? And the, and the answer for me is, I don't know. I don't count anyways, but it's very tricky because then these one turn fast moves. And obviously this is where Sparky would be way better too. So this is real rough. Yeah, I'm, I'm running Spark for sure if I bring it to regionals. Because um, Lickitung, what makes Lickitung very tricky, besides being super bulky and super spammy, is that it's tough to count on because it's a one-turn fast move. So how do, you, how do you count on it? I don't really know. Um, you can, let me see if I can bring up the comment because there is, I just did a whole, someone asked me, comparing it to, to Lantern with its moveset. And I did the whole calculation. So just give me one sec while I bring it up on my computer here. I let this play out. Okay. Mirror match, they have an energy event. Uh, yeah, but they're low enough. I can just ice punch here. Okay, so Lickitung gets three energy per lick. So in a standard two-turn moveset, like counter, um, spark, those are all two turns, it would get six energy per thing. So that is the equivalent of Water Gun, right? Water Gun gets six energy. So if, if you can't do it from that perspective if you can't count from the one perspective what you can do is try to count from your pokemon's perspective 
right? So if you know that at lick time gets three energy per lick, so basically two licks will be the equivalent of a water gun, and and water gun, or uh, no, sorry, or spark, it'd be tough to count yours as well. It'd be the same as spark energy ge generation. No, it'd be the same. This is where it's better, right? So this is one matchup. I know, sorry, I'm going to go back to this thought. Don't worry. But this is one matchup where having a spark lantern, this is actually quite a tricky matchup. But having a water gun lantern, this is a very comfortable matchup. So basically what I'm saying here is if you count, if you know your Pokemon's turn, if you have a two-turn Pokemon, um, even a three-turn, you have to, it's it's much easier with two. But if you know how much, how many moves you're getting through, you can account from that perspective. So if I had a spark lantern and it takes me six sparks to get to a surf, I know that six sparks at seven, what did I say? Seven? Sorry, let me just, let me just bring it up here. Seven energy, yep, seven energy, six damage. So I know that it takes, and surf is what, 40, surf is what, 40 energy? Surf is 40 energy, yep. See, I'm learning, I'm learning numbers. So spark is seven energy, surf to get to it is 40 energy, so it takes you six water guns, six sparks to get to a surf, you will know that by the time you get there, six Lickitung is also basically at its body slam because the time you do your six, you're at 42 energy. By the time they do their six, they're at 36 energy, and a body slam is 35 energy. So that's where it kind of gets, that's sort of the best way. And this is why, this is what really differentiates the absolute best. Um, you can try to count one turn fast moves. I just think it's probably easier just to know um, based on your slightly longer move that is easier to count from your perspective what your opponent has. Right? So that is how I would count one turn fast moves if you cannot. Get it, and you can do it the same with like if you have a three or turn, four turn fast move, you could just use that idea to to count this, count those. Um, so again, I would have had an amazing matchup there. I still have a good matchup, obviously, because they can't throw anything at me. Um, maybe if you hit the bubbles there, I'm just gonna chip. Yeah, and now I'm going in here. I want, I still want to keep lantern, even though lanterns are throwing resisted water guns. It's still they can't really throw anything at me. I'm gonna shield up a psychic because I don't want them to try and flip a switch here. So I want to try and keep switch. But yeah. We'll go through the rest of these matchups, but that is basically it. Um, yeah, I prefer I prefer Spark, but I get it. If you if you're seeing Swampert and you're seeing other ground Pokemon, and then sure. Water Gun, ninety five percent of the time. Spark. They're gonna farm me down all the way. Uh, maybe I. Nah, they probably could have farmed me down all the way. Come in, Scrafty. So I kind of have to stay here. But I think between the two surfs here, I should be able to put this low enough that I can just body slam my way through this. And I think they're realizing that I'm, I'm weak to this in the back because they shielded here. I am gonna shield back. Um, I don't think a Thunderbolt will take out from this range. So I'm just throwing the Surf and I'm maybe gonna try and catch here or I'm gonna force them to throw and then I'll just lick down. Yeah, that makes more sense too. One other thing I wanted to check is, this is just my own. Um, the Surf is 
40 energy for 65 damage, so 1.62 damage per energy. And Thunderbolt is 55 energy for 90 damage, 1.63. It's literally the same. Okay, so there is no difference. You could just, it's just preference, essentially. Not preference, but... Those are, the, those are the ones where I don't know what to throw in situations there. Like tongue again, spark would be better, but just got to stay in here. That's why I don't know what would be better in these situations. Like I just said, Thunderbolt, 55 energy, 90 damage, 1.63 damage per energy. Um... Plus, like, this is just, sorry, these are just numbers based on um, PV poke. So this does not include stab, but it doesn't matter. Both would get stab because surf and electric. They both get the same stab, same type attack bonus. So they would both be bumped up a little bit more. Um, so they get 20%. So, like, Thunderbolt, I guess, would be slightly more. 45, 40 energy versus 65 damage for surf, 1.62. Again, add 20% stab. You're still looking at, like, very, very inconsequential difference. So I guess the only way I would throw Thunderbolt is if it's super effective or you're only going to get to one more move. Otherwise, I think Surf is probably the way. Maybe not, though. Let me know your thoughts on that um, in those type of situations where it's like... It, it's the same with Weather Ball and Dazzling Gleam, I believe on nine tails where there really is no difference in the damage per energy um, output there they're both basically the same so in those situations i don't ever really know which one i should throw there's always the risk of throwing like the the nuke that they could just shield and then you drop so much energy but then you still need to throw two moves to get to that equal out right you still essentially need two weather balls to get that same damage per energy as the Dazzling Gleam. But that would also cost you like optimized fast move time and stuff like that. So these are the parts of the games that are a little more tricky. I'm very I'm well well aware how random rambly this video is. <laughs> I'm I have been pretty good at analyzing the battles recently. I'm talking about like, okay, in this matchup you gotta stay, you gotta leave it, yeah. This one's very more rambly. But I think it's because this one's more of a um, an analysis on water gun versus spark, and that leads into a bunch of other conversations around fast move damage, um, energy generation, because that's basically what this game comes down to, right? Typings and then energy and damage management and output. So that is a team. Um, when's this going up? Sunday. I've been all over the place with videos here. I had a missed time upload and had two videos go live at the same time on Thursday morning. <laughs> Quite the mess. But anyways, yeah, I've got like five more videos still to come with all these great league teams. Um, again, you're going to see a lot of meta Pokemon. Like you're going to see MetaChamp. You're going to see MetaChamp, Lickitung, Lantern multiple times in these next five videos so i apologize for the for the um sort of continuedness of this i i am doing it just because i'm i like i mentioned in my saturday video i'm just trying to figure out which pokemon i want to bring to toronto regionals and then once toronto regionals is done which is two weeks i will get back to using other pokemon um that i have built up that i just haven't really used yet this season um and that is it. I think the battles are basically almost done. Yeah, after this, this is the last one. Which then I will just sign off because I have done a lot of talking this video. Get off an ice punch, get off a second ice punch. Can I get off a third before? The, I mean, they'll probably get to a sky attack before I get off a third. Um, I think I'm going to... Oh, I try and catch. Yeah, that's not a bad idea because now I can just get the Thunderbolt. They're not going to farm down, and it takes now takes longer to get to sky attack, so it's going to force them to throw here. Um, and if they don't, Thunderbolt them to oblivion. Anyways, that's it. 
Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one.